This is Mastering Mathematics with your teacher, Karen Weston. Hello everyone. Welcome again to another in the series, Mastering Mathematics. It's a program sponsored by the Ministry of Education using its EBU unit and Center for Mathematics Education and ABS Television. As usual, you know what is our business. We're going to educate the whole world about mathematics. And yes, today I have with me one of my treasures. I want you to know that school does not stop or learning does not stop at the, um, in the classroom walls. It goes beyond the classroom. And so today I'm proud for you to see one of my diligent students who is Annette Dow. And she, yes, is taking mathematics exam in January. All right? So you students in school, watch it. Because your mommies and daddies will be competing with you and winning. Is that true? Yes, I actually said that. Because Annette knows that she, age, is just a number. And it's the passion we have for learning which is going to make this happen. Today, we're going to be dealing with a new topic, and this one would be functions and relations. Mm -hmm. A very easy topic, and what I would say, as mathematicians, we have wrapped it, if you used to use what you're calling already grape leaf, today we are using foil papers, because you're going to say, but I know how to do that, I know that, and I can do that too. So, just sit back and relax, because yes, I also have another princess coming to join me, and this is Charmaine. So Annette and Charmaine would be coming right away, real, yes, real classroom, right. Annette and Charmaine would be right here with me, joining me to show you how we are going to learn functions and relations, all right? And do you want to know something? They're coming from work working from 8 in the morning all right and still this passion to make certain that they are on par with what is happening in terms of learning and especially in the field of mathematics so today i have Charmaine and annetta Dow here with me and our topic will be functions and relations okay and yes i did say this is something you knew or not. Why am I saying this? If I gave you this equation, y is equal to 3x plus 2, and asked you to find the value of y if x is equal to 3, could you give me the answer for that? Annette and Charmaine. Yeah. Okay, if we have y is equal to 3x plus 2 and I want you to tell me the value of y when x is equal to 3 what would I have to do? We have x Yes Alright so it's equal and so I have this and then, so I put a 3 plus 2 then what am I going to be doing? Multiplying, Multiplying. Yes Okay and my answer is Alright Don't so y is equal to 11. So do not let this big word functions and relations frighten you. Where we have y, we're going to replace this by f of x. So you're going to get something to say. If f of x is equal to 3x plus 2, they're still asking you to find f of 3. And the principle is the same. This is the big topic where they're talking. Them new maths. No, it's old maths wrapped up in foil paper when we're accustomed to use grape leaf. All right? So it's still dukkana you're eating. Right. And that is what we're doing here. But, you know, as usual, we have to start with our definition. So we're going back to tell you something about the whole topic of functions and relations what again you are saying that we are saying that our function and relation it starts where we are talking about mapping okay it starts where we're talking about mapping now the first thing we have to know 
because you're talking about functions and relation we want to know what is a relation so that's the first thing that we must define so right away yes language in the mathematics classroom so the first thing we want to do and I'm getting this definition from Gray and Lane's book um, certificate mathematics okay he does it very simple and just to the point and that is all I want okay so that definition will say a relation a relation is a set of ordered pairs okay so that is what we're saying a relation so this is our definition first of all we define a relation what do we talk we're talking about relationship okay yes the topic is function function and relations okay and relations all right so we say a relation is a set of ordered pairs and where have we been meeting ordered pairs already have we met any Okay, they haven't done the topic with me yet that they call a graph, but Jetta knows that, you know, right? Because we know right away we're talking about graph and we talk about X, Y. Isn't that true? X with our Y. Yes? Okay, and then so we're doing, so you can have two and you can have four. And you can have zero, zero. And we can also have what? Three and we can have six. And you can have four and you can have eight. Um, let's hop up this and be in order so we can put our zero zero first and you have two you have four you have three you have six four you have eight okay um, right away we know all the time that when we talk about ordered pairs is always with our X and our Y value the first number represents our X the second number represents our Y value in the topic I just want you to see the interrelationship among things in this topic we don't call the first number representing X we call the first number the domain all right so hear that word again the domain so the first numbers in the ordered pair is called the domain all right so what you're accustomed to call x we are now calling it the domain and the second value we call it the range that is right we call it the range and we're accustomed to say why so that when we substitute in the value of the domain the answer we get is called the range all right so we have our three terms already we have function so function and then we have a relation which is a set of ordered pairs all right and then so we say that these can be written like um, zero zero two four three six four eight it is an ordered pair because I am sure you're looking and when I'm writing zero zero and I'm writing two four and I'm writing three six and I'm writing four eight we are seeing that there's a relationship between our domain and our range because how are we getting those values okay and it is from out of this that we may be able to say what an equation possibly could be that would give us something like that and you know what I have my two student guests right here my two students and they're going to be telling me if they think they can say what would be the value of y what would be the value of x if when I have two I'm getting four when I have three I'm getting six what would be that equation that actually would produce something like this and it is the equation okay what y is equal to we'll be calling the function 
Okay, so we'll be right back. Give you a little break. Three little things you know so far. Functions and relation. And we say a relation is a set of ordered pairs. And when we get them, what you're accustomed to say in the Cartesian plane, you're calling your X and your Y values. When we're dealing with function and relation, we're calling them the domain and the range. Okay? The domain and the range. And then we see already that, yes, we know these things, but they just know on the different topics. So take a little break and we'll be right back. I may not hear, but that does not and should not affect my ability to learn and to function in the real world. I am a gifted student. I need the opportunity to soar. Support me in my climb to higher levels of learning. Some of our children have special educational needs. They have a right to an education. So, let us teach them the way that they learn and help them to achieve their full potential. To succeed in mathematics, you need to build on what you have learned before. New concepts are added to and build upon previous concepts. It is very important that the early material be mastered thoroughly. Similarly, mastery of material from previous classes makes success in later classes more likely. So continually review and practice concepts from previous sessions. Carefully read over the sections of your textbook assigned by your teacher and look carefully at the sample problems. Decide if you benefit more by reading before or after the instructor covers the material. The Ministry of Education, Science and Technology and CIBC First Caribbean International Bank are proud to present the second annual CIBC First Caribbean Primary School Award. Join us and be a part of this celebration of academic excellence as we show appreciation for the outstanding accomplishments of our young achievers. It's the second annual CIBC First Caribbean International Bank Primary School Award, Thursday, 11 December 2014, at the Precision Center in Painters at 4 p.m. Come and encourage the youth. Join us for a new series of Mastering Mathematics, Mondays and Tuesdays, 6.30 p.m. here on ABS-TV. Right, so once we have that word, because you're back from your break, you're settled, you have your pen and your paper, Charmaine and Annette, they're ready to go. And then they're saying, yes, we know, Jack, they call domain and the name range. How will you use them? Okay. And that is what we're going to show you now. So where can you see these things and how will you use the domain and range? And this is what we usually do. We set up two things, okay? And here we have them, so a mapping. All right, you can just have it going and open thing, but we like to say we're doing things like this, okay? And we know that that is the domain, okay? 
and we and we can have um, values already that we can go zero one two three four five all right and I can say we are using an equation that says y is equal to 4x so what would each of these be mapped onto given the equation that we are using what would each one of these be mapped onto to give us our range and that is how we use those two terms so we would be given the domain uh, sometimes you can be given the range and ask to find the domain but this time I am giving you the domain and asking you to help me find the range when I'm using the equation y is equal to um, 4x and instead of y remember we said you can be seeing f of x is equal to 4x okay so y, f of x replaces our customary letter of y now answers 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 zero. Um, zero would be mapped on to zero what would one be mapped on to I'm using the equation y is equal to 4x it will be mapped on to four. how did you get four because one is x four times one. Right. So we say when x is equal to one, then when f of x is equal to four x, we are saying f of one would be equal to four times one, which is equal to four. Don't forget we're teaching the people at home, so we have to tell them. And they say, Miss Weston, don't go too fast now because I'm slow. All right, so I'm taking care of that too. And I know Connie in the post office and all those girls down there, right? Because they are also looking too. You don't even have to have students going to school now. Because Connie made a suggestion to say, Miss Weston, why you don't have certain days and says for the um, primary school students and then other days? And she's right on the ball because the next term, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be saying no because it's crunch time for everybody. It's for the CSEC student and it's also for the primary students. So the first 15 minutes will be devoted, the first half of the program will be devoted to my primary school students and even my second bit, grade two and grade four because everybody wants to hear something. Okay, but now I have sent my primary school students on a vacation and I've told them to go down to Green Bay and support there right yes they're having what Tani called plenty yamming today all right because mm -hmm. they have having open day and um, they're going to be having fees because they're raising some money for a worthy cause too yes for their sick bay and for a studio room jetta you understand that so we need one too okay so that is what they're doing so while we are here working we take note of that too and citizens out there listening and they want to see things too and these big people they're no longer going to be afraid because watch Annette and Charmaine at home ready to give you students in school competition okay right now so we said if f of x is equal to 4x f of 1 would be equal to 4 times 1 which is equal to 4 all right, so the domain value we substitute into our equation to get what the range is. So we would be repeating again when we have f of 2, what would the answer be equal to? Eight. Right, because it is 4 times 2, and then so we're going to get 8. All right, and I know Miss Wire from St. Philip, she's listening yes okay everybody turn down the pot right now they finish cook and they will listen in and of course nurse Gomes from Villa she's not going to miss and you give me the names of your people and oh my Bob you they still didn't walk with your names today again but Zena remember your name and Miss Mustington everything is going to be all right yes so we are on the ball too and we cannot forget family dentistry oh good Jehovah thank you for those people now f of 3 what would we get for the answer 12. okay and why are they saying 12 because it is the equation that we are using and where you have x it is 4 times not x but 4 times 3 so when we have our f of 3 it would now be equal to 4 times 3 and that is equal to 12 okay and when we have 4 what are we going to get okay because f of 4 again and we are using this equation 
So where we have 4x, it's now going to be equal to 4 times 4, and the answer is going to be 16. And then, when you have f of x, is, and we have f of 5, what is the answer going to be? Okay, f of 5, so it's now equal to um, 4 times 5, and it's equal to 20. That was not difficult, and that is what CXC asked, all right? If we get the domain, and you have um, the equation, and then they're going to ask you, what is the value? Okay, what is the value? In our second half or tomorrow, because I'm still um, going and explaining content. Now, we can see something too, which is mapped on like this. This time now, I am going to give them this expression and see if they can take it a step further. Now, if I gave you this, let's still use our domain. Let's change the equation this time. So that if we have f of x and it is equal now to x squared, okay, and it is equal now to x squared, what would be the range? What would be the range for each of our domain element? What would be the range? First of all, what do we have to know? What is, x? What, is, uh, what is x and we also have to know what does x squared mean okay so you see we build up and we get into things and we see the relationship so what does x squared mean x times x, x, times x. x. right so I have one of my little students over there that's doing that right away oh she told me her name from St. Adventist School um a pretty nice little girl but the name always coming out of my head because all these names sound like African names not Antigua names again so the kind of, was she or something she told me her name was oh my okay but so that is what she's now studying and she's a third former so we can build them up from there coming up CXC does not ask for anything more all right so again and if we see on an exam paper f such that x tends to x squared we do not get scared for that notation because we know that it means f of x is equal to x squared. So I am telling you where you see x with an arrow like that and that colon, all you do, it means that is a, f is a function of x, all right? And then we, you can say you substitute equal for the, um, for the arrow. So we know it means f of x is equal to x squared. So we're working this time where we have f of x is equal to x squared. And we're using this, say, these same values for the domain. What would, it be, what would f of 0 be equal to? Zero. So this would be equal to 0. Did you get that at home? Yes, because you said f of a, f of zero would be equal to zero squared. And zero times zero is still zero. And when we have f of one, what would it be? One. Um, f of one, they say, would be one because it's one squared. And squared means this little word, this little number at the top is called the index. And it says the number by itself, how many times? So it's one times one which is 1. And then we have f of 2. What would that be equal to? 4. So f of 2 would be equal to 4 because when we have f of 2 it's equal to 2 squared which is equal to 2 times 2 equal 4. Alright, so that is 4. And what would f of 3 be equal to? So 3 squared and it would be equal to 3 times 3. So you see two, index 2 so you multiply the number 2 times right okay so it's now equal to 9 yes so my taxi drivers okay all these worry players and if everybody we understand what we're saying right and the guy just met me in the traffic and said yes i understand everything you say so i want you to keep on like that so when we have four squared what is that 16. Right, because it is 4 times 4, which is equal to 16. 16. And here, and here, when we have f of 5, 
what would that be equal to? And it's equal to 5 squared, which is equal to 5 times 5, which is equal to 25. Now, surprisingly, what do we call these numbers in the range? Do we have a name for them? 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. What do we call them? And we are square, square numbers. We call them square numbers. So you tell all about the mummies and the daddies, boy, they're bright now. All right. All of us thinking that they're, they're just cook. No, no, they're bright. All right. So, right. So they're square numbers. And that is why every little corner, every street thing, anywhere we see the stone, we're going to sit down and teach them. As soon as I say, Miss Preston, I don't want, I sit down right there. Because they know. All right, I will give them the pen and the paper because we are going to do that. And Jetta loves, loves his task. He loves to be in the classroom and I just love him to be the cameraman because this is not a cameraman that does just zoom, zoom. He's so much a part and the smile on his face when he sees the <laughs> lesson and the knowledge being imparted. That is good. So, we can wrap up our first day with functions and relations. Notice again, we are talking about ordered pairs which means that this would have put us back on our Cartesian plane, okay? So our X and our Y axis is again, all right? So we can never get rid of that. And I am going to make certain that I have my students doing a lot of the algebra because it is underpinning everything that we think about and do in mathematics. It's the tool, all right? It's the tool. And we're going to take everybody on board because we're not leaving any prisoners. Now, tomorrow, we're going to continue with this because now we understand, and I just told them when they saw f of 2 and f of 1, we just introduced that and it just came so natural that nobody's saying, what do you mean by this f of 2 and so? So teachers, you know, have to slip in the thing. Show them the relationship, all right? So they don't think, nothing is new. It's as old as under the sun. Mm -hmm. From the time they're doing their substituting, when y is equal to this, what is that? When this is equal to that, but just because we call it f of 2, and nobody took the time to explain that the relationship with what you knew already, because learning is by association. Then we know that this is it. And my student guess has proven, most student guess, not guess, students, mm -hmm. telling you that yes, we know. So we go from our definition and then we just branch out and we get into that. Well, you can make up some equation for yourself, give yourself some numbers and see that you know what we are doing. Tomorrow, we will be back to show you another aspect of this full topic. And I am going to show you how you find the inverse of a given function. So until then, see you tomorrow. What are we going to tell our student guests? Because you're coming back here. We're not moving. The party has just started when it comes to sharing of knowledge. Okay. <laughs> right. And what do you have to tell them, Charmaine? Stay focused. Exactly. All right. So see you tomorrow. Join us next time for another in the series, Mastering Mathematics, a production of the Education Broadcasting Unit in the Ministry of Education and ABS-TV.